Turning now to the race for control of the U.S. Senate as Democrats fight to win back the chamber, there's a race that hasn't gotten as much national attention. Mississippi has not elected a black senator since Reconstruction. We're talking about roughly a century and a half ago. Mike Espy already made history once, becoming the state's first black congressman since Reconstruction when he won election in 1986. Now he's trying to break barriers again, this time in the U.S. Senate, and he joins us now. Thank you so much for your time. Hello, good morning, thank you so much. Good evening to you. So last month you tweeted, and I'd like to quote here, Democratic Party leaders have ignored our race for the U.S. Senate in Mississippi. They don't think a black man in Mississippi can win, and they continue to count out the South and black voters. Now, since the death of Ruth Bader Ginsburg, donations have poured in with now just one week to go until Election Day. Has the Democratic Party made the investment that you think it'll take to win Mississippi? Lindsay, sometimes the, the uh, squeaky wheel gets the grease, and so we had to say something because at that time, you know, it was it was real, and it was even almost urgent. So yes, I can say now that our plaintive cries uh, have been answered. Uh, we've had substantial contributions and interest from the DSCC and the DNC. I speak with their donors uh, quite a bit, almost every day. So they've now come into Mississippi. They've allowed us, of course, to run our own campaign with our own message, but they've been buttress in it with support. They've helped us with polling, with, uh, with uh, organizing in the field, and they've enabled us to build what I believe is the largest, highest, deepest voter coalition in Mississippi's history. We've been building it for a year and a half. They've come in in the last couple of months, and I think it's going to reveal itself to be something marvelous. So given that, would you still say that it's going to be difficult for you to win statewide when President Trump is expected to win Mississippi by wide margins, especially when you were not able to win the seat in a special election back in 2018 when Trump was not on the ballot? Well, Joe Biden's going to do very, very well here. I'm not saying to you, honestly, he'll win. He's going to do much, much better than Hillary Clinton did in 2016. Also, we've noticed in our internal polling that President Trump has lost a lot of steam in Mississippi. That's primarily because of his mismanagement of the virus. So everyone knows he lied to us, and because he lied, we have now more than 3,200 Mississippians who have died. Also, yes, I ran before 19 months ago against the same awful senator, Senator Hyde Smith, who wants to take us back to, a, to another day. But even though we were the last Senate race in the nation, we only had about six months to run. We got in there, we ran hard, and we got almost 47% of the vote. So I took that really as a harbinger of things to come. I really believe that I had to run then in order to win now. We learned a lot of lessons. We corrected our course. We have a new path, and I think we're going to win here in seven days. All right. Well, Mississippi is certainly one of five states that does not allow no excuse absentee voting and is widely considered one of the hardest states to vote in. The state does have the largest share of black voters per capita in the country. Do you think that black voters will be able to vote in large enough numbers to make a difference, a substantial difference in this race? We've already said it. Uh, you're right. We, uh, we have some archaic voting laws. And we, we need to do better. But we do have, um, we have in-person voting, early voting for certain categories. Those who are 65 of age or older, those who are disabled, and those who can prove that they won't be at home on November 3rd. So we've just been watching, and I've been very impressed with the long lines of voters, uh, many, many, many of them African-American voters who are, who are going to vote early, who are, who are fit within those, those categories. I want to play for you President Trump's son-in-law, Jared Kushner's comments yesterday about the black community getting a lot of attention. One thing we've seen in a lot of the, 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 the black community, which is mostly Democrat, is that uh, President Trump's policies are the policies that can help people break out of the problems that they're complaining about, but he can't want them to be successful more than they want to be successful. What's your response to that, and what do you say to a white voter in Mississippi who agrees with his statement? Uh, I can say that he's wrong and they're wrong. You know, it's uh, it's an awful thing to say. Uh, Lindsay, I'm the chairman of the board of a $400 million nonprofit. I've been on that board for 25 years, and we have a mission function. We go into low-income areas in the Mid-South, Mississippi, Alabama, Louisiana, Tennessee, and uh, Arkansas, and we fund first-time 
homes for, for those who've never owned a home before. We fund businesses that are viable. We build medical clinics. So what I'm saying to you is that uh, we work in these low income, low income communities. Majority of them are African-American. So uh, what Jared Christian said is, um, is, uh, is awful. You know, I've got, I've got stronger words for it, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop there. <laughs> uh, just by the virtue of fact, I've seen people wanting to lift themselves up uh, coming into my uh, financial organization, my nonprofit, $2,400 million. I know they want better. They want better credit and uh, they want an opportunity. If they get an opportunity, they're gonna seize it and they're gonna lift themselves. Tell Jared Kushner, he's a lie. And, uh, and so are the others who believe that way. And finally, you are one of five black candidates for Senate running in the South this election season, where voters have only elected one black senator since the 1860s, talking, of course, about Republican Tim Scott in South Carolina. What do you anticipate your reaction would be if none of you are able to break through with a win, especially after this year's alleged reckoning on race and social justice? Well, I don't think that's going to happen, to be honest, but you did ask the question. If that happens, we'll just have to keep on building. I ran before 19 months ago, and again, I got 47% of the vote, even though we only had six months to run. So, you know, in the South, we suffered from a legacy of disinvestment. If we had had uh, $20, $30 million coming into Mississippi uh, 10 years ago, we would have uh, better data. We would have a better political infrastructure. We'd have a stronger bench. So what we're doing now is um, is um, filling that vacuum. Candidates, uh, candidacies like mine and candidate campaigns like ours, we're doing the hard work. We're building the bridge that I can cross over and others behind me and so forth. So we're doing the hard work and we'll continue to do that. And uh, But I don't think that the uh, what you just said are, are, are just um, imagine what happened. I think we're going to do very, very well in seven days. All right, it is the final stretch. Mike Espy, we thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.